<laughs> oh my goodness. Hello, everybody. If you happen to be seeing this on a replay, which is what we expect. <laughs> <laughs> which is what we expect. Um, just want you guys all to know that you can ask any questions of Vanessa or myself, put it down in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer it here on this post so you'll be able to see it. I'm just going to see if I can get a link to this thing so I can let me just see if it's even going live on our page in a quick second oh my goodness 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 okay we are live on the real Valve page so everybody should be able to see us how exciting slash frightening <laughs> we should let them know we had a couple of difficulties right right we did have some technical difficulties and that's what happens when you help to run a technology company you are going to have tech difficulties so hello, Vanessa. Welcome. Hello, Thank you Kendall. for being on my show, Real Agents, Real Lives. And one of the reasons that I love doing this show is that we as a company at Realvolve believe very strongly that building a business is important, but having a life is arguably almost more important than that. And I am finding and talking to people that we think are doing a kick-ass job of doing both to the best of their ability, knowing that we all have challenges. Okay, now you've got me in the background somewhere. Yeah, I mean, okay, all right. So a little bit of an introduction. This is my good friend, Vanessa Bergmark. She is the owner and, uh, and CEO of Red Oak Realty in Berkeley, California. She started life as a real estate agent in 2003 um, and went into management almost right away. She was an agent for nine months, did 11 deals. And I think any of us out there would be just excited if any of our new agents or for a new agent um, could do that many deals in just nine months, especially in the Bay Area. Um, became Went into management um, in 2007. In 2010, she bought a venerated brokerage in the Berkeley area called Red Oak um, and took over and, and really changed the ship of a very traditional brokerage into the dy dynamic, often covered, cutting edge brokerage that Red Oak is today. Um, and she now has 100 agents, two offices, uh, she's got a thousand different people pulling her in a thousand different, incredibly urgent and important directions all at once. Um, and she is doing her brokerage is doing about eight hundred million, which is round and about what a thousand transactions is that what mm -hmm. we're talking about yep. in a year? Okay, mm -hmm. so to say that Vanessa is busy as a broker is a massive understatement. But in addition to that, she has two kids that are not independent. She, they're actually at the I need mom every <laughs> second of the day. <laughs> If, if any of you out there have littles and you think you're busy, wait until your kids get to be tweens. Um, not yet driving and very, very busy. She has a husband, a dog, two cats, and an accidental crayfish. She is one busy <laughs> lady. <laughs> I love the accidental crayfish. <laughs> Yes, well, that's what you said. So mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of want, with that introduction in mind, you guys can kind of get a sense of how much you um, either um, uh, feel that you're similar to Vanessa or just feel like you would like to get to that someday. Um, some of you are probably going, oh my God, I will never be Vanessa, that's me. Um, but you're wondering, gosh, how can I have a life like yours? So. Let's just kind of like dive into it. I first wanted to get into the nitty gritty stuff, the way yeah. that you're running Red Oak. That's a lot of agents. That's a lot of transactions. How many people are on your staff and, and generally what do you have them doing? Oh, yeah. Well, I definitely don't do this on my own, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's 100 agents and they're really highly, I feel, supported. We've got right now currently 16. As of next week, we'll have 17 staff. Wow. Um, and so we have a marketing department, we have a um, operations department, and we have a transaction department, and then we have our sales managers. So I have two full-time sales managers, including myself, that help with the deal doctoring. And then the rest of it is all administrative um, tasks around um, 
both the marketing of properties, the marketing of the brokerage, the marketing of the agents, and then all of the transaction uh, support. California, as many right. people probably have heard, is right. a very legal state. Uh, lawsuits here, <laughs> you know. Our files are that thick. Yes. Yes. Our files, like, are, are, you know, a condo is going to have you at three, 400 um, pages of documents. So right. our files, right. that, that's a big, massive job to do the transactions of this. So I have a big team of transaction uh, coordinators. Mm -hmm. So large staff. And I've spoken to a number of Red Oak agents over the last two or three years. And I know that your people are, that you guys treat your people as high touch as I do with just five agents. So, you know, any of you who are looking at Vanessa and going, yeah, 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 you talk a good game, girlfriend, but that that isn't the way it is. It is, trust me, it totally is. Um, so that's a lot of hands-on stuff, um, you know, where, 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 where was, oh, there we go. So tell me, I mean, that, that, tell me what your typical day looks like. I know every day is massively different, but what are your touchstones, the things that kind of keep you on track during a day? Yeah, well, I, so my job has evolved, right? I've been with the company now for, for, for several years. Um, so I came on in 2007. So, so what is it, 11 years it'll be. Um, and it's evolved from the day-to-day -day operations of being in their boots on the ground, sitting behind the desk, taking the calls, doing a lot of deal doctoring, a lot of coaching, uh, all the hiring, and then kind of running the staff. I've stepped back a little bit now, and, and I have two incredible um, leaders, uh, Passion and Melissa, who you probably met last week at Women uh, I had dinner with them. Yes, they're yes, awesome. They're fantastic. Um, they've got the sort of the vision and the values all lined up. So they take the lead now in running our office meetings, our training, our coaching, uh, all of the interviews, uh, working with the staff. And I'm more behind the scenes touching base with them and working through them. But you know, a typical day still has me on the phone with my top agents. Um, one thing I love about Red Oak Agents is there is no, sorry, a little text. Oh, there's someone <laughs> now. Um, so, uh, but is staying in conversation with them. I found that um, even some of our top people, although they are super independent and do it on their own, they do need the support and they stay with us because the support is there. And when, we're, when they need us, we're right. right. So there's right. a lot of that still. I get a lot of calls. Um, Sometimes I have client meetings, depending on how serious the situation is. Um, but you know, it's it's it runs from running the finance, um, the operations and the finance is a huge piece of running the brokerage, right? Understanding your profitability, where your weak points are, where your strong points are, um, different programs that you want to start well, running. Well, hold up, hold up, hold up, dude. That sounds like you're putting eighteen hours a day. I mean, when do you start? When do you stop? I mean, oh, how do you, yeah. what, are you, well, what are you doing? Okay, I stop usually at six o'clock. What I start is I usually go to bed. I, I am someone that needs a lot of sleep. I'm in bed by 8 30, 9 o'clock. Everyone okay. knows that when the sun goes down, I'm done. Like my lights are off. But I wake up probably. I'm super early riser. I always have been. So I'm up at 5 a.m. Okay. I have my uh, first three cups of coffee and then I go right into work. But that, that time of day is when I get all of my administrative tasks done. I get my list. I'm a big right. list girl and I start that. Love in. List. Yeah. List and checklist. Love Like them. it's nothing super fancy. Like I'm not this big, like, you know, I have all this in like tech platforms and I, I'm like yellow pads of paper. I buy them in bulk. They are all over the house and they have every project on them. And I just put a line through everything, but it keeps me on task. Right. Um, right. But yeah, I just break out, you know, my so hours. You get up in the morning day. super early. You're, 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 you're knocking out, thinking about your lists, probably yep. transferring over stuff that didn't get done the day before onto a new list for the day. Right. What else yeah. are you? What else do you need to touch in the morning during your quiet time? Um, I definitely need some quiet time, right? It's that I go for a walk with my dog every morning. He keeps me somewhat healthy. <laughs> um, and then I go, you know, I have to, I'm, I'm big about trying to take that time to get a workout in. So mm -hmm. um, getting mm -hmm. up and, and, and doing some form of exercise, usually if I don't do it by 6 a.m., it doesn't get done. Because by okay. 8 and 9 a.m., that's when the calls start rolling in. So whatever okay. was going to happen is, is done. Right. Uh, I, I get more work focused. So I try to get that healthy stuff in in the morning. Okay. You know? Okay. So I'm a mom. You know, my kids are older than yours, but I've been doing this since they were born, you know, right through to them being old now, along with me. I found, <laughs> don't laugh at me. Um, I found <laughs> that the transition from badass realtor and now broker to mom. I found that a really tough transition whenever time it was that I got home and I tried to get home around, you know, six, seven myself. How do you handle that transition going from badass 
To mom. To personal. To mom. To wife. To whatever. To doing homework on fractions, which yeah, I like, yeah. Yeah, um, So, you know, two things. One thing that's worth pointing out that's different from an agent is when you're an agent, you are working with brand new relationships on a regular basis, right? Even mm -hmm. if they're repeat clients, you're with people in really intense moments mm -hmm. and then the escrow ends and you move on and it's a whole new relationship again. One of the things I always say that has worked to my advantage of being a manager is I'm dealing with the same people. Mm -hmm. So we know each other's style. We know um, there's a high level of trust there. I've been working mm -hmm. with the same individuals for 11 years. So right. um, it's easier sometimes to set boundaries with them um, and, and for them to acknowledge each other's boundaries where they, mm -hmm. they know I will get back to them. They have a high level of trust, but they really do allow me um, and respect uh, me putting my family first, right? At least at certain points of the day, you know? Okay. And there are times when I have missed, you know, the band performance or I have, you know, missed the art, um, you know, display at the end of camp because I'm, I've got something really intense going on at work. But I do try to really draw the line of being home at six o'clock at night and mm -hmm. transitioning over to that time stops with the calls. I make dinner every night. God bless my kids for eating it. Uh, when we <laughs> sit down, I'm not a pretty bad cook, but I cook it uh, and it's organic. <laughs> and it comes organic. from an amazing organized pantry that it I does. still love. It does, pantry. I still have that pantry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but that's a high priority. Right. And, and it's also really a high value of who I hire. Like my, my staff, they, they're very, you know, they've got families and that their families are very important to them. Mm -hmm. So um, I honor it in them. They honor it in me. My agents all are, you know, either raising kids or putting kids through college or have young ones. Right. And so all of that is sort of like we get it, but we're really good with the boundaries. Now, so did you know, say to your agents and your staff, sorry, but you know, once the sun goes down, I'm not responding to your calls or do they just know that through the trust relationship that you've created? I said it probably 10 years ago, right? Okay. Right. I said it and then I honored it and then they honor it. Like I, the truth was, I don't bring my phone up to bed. So I leave mm -hmm. it downstairs and I've said, right. believe me, if you want me calling you on your offer, I'm up at five. We can start talking <laughs> early. Like, well, we got this. <laughs> but at 8.30, I'm, I'm, I want to read a book. I want to right. go to bed. And right. I, if I have that phone there, I will pick it up. It's like, you know, so I keep it downstairs. So yeah, after a while, if you consistently don't answer the phone past 830, they get right. right. And I mean, so what, what, what advice do you have for your agents around boundaries? I'm, I'm like totally going off script at this point. I might yeah. as well take my questions and put them over my shoulder. <laughs> you know, boundaries are a very interesting thing because if yeah. you don't honor your own boundaries, no one else will. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I think I've somebody needs to tweet that right there. If you don't honor your own boundaries, nobody else will. They That's won't. a tweetable right there. They just won't. Um, yeah. And I think I, I honored mine. And I also showed, though, that I respected the fact that these issues were brewing. But mm -hmm. between 10 o'clock at night and, mm -hmm. and, and 8 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. you may be able to talk about something, but you can't solve or do anything about that. Mm -hmm. Title companies and lenders and all, they're closed for the night. Right. So sit on it, take a breather with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell your clients to take a breather. This is not open heart surgery. And in the morning, mm -hmm. we reconvene with a fresh approach. Mm -hmm. What one thing though with boundaries is if you if you say, you know, this is the boundary or this is the time in which I work or when I respond, and then you constantly don't uphold that, mm -hmm. they don't exist. Right. And um, and if you don't follow up with somebody when you said you would, if I don't, mm -hmm. if I if they sent me a text at ten o'clock and the next day I just completely ignored it, then that mm -hmm. level of trust wouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. But in the morning, I get that text, I work on it, and then we talk at a reasonable hour. Right. So, right. so it all gets honored. Um, but it's really created a, a high level of trust in the brokerage mm -hmm. and a high level of consistency. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing I tell my manager now as they take the lead and they deal with most of the deal doctoring or the upset client or the, you know, uh, strategic offering or whatever needs to happen that's time sensitive. Mm -hmm. They put those same sort of values in place. Um, it sounds that. to me, if I were to repeat back what I heard, sounds to me that the most important component of this is the consistency mm, with absolutely. which you respond, right? Yep. That you consistently at five o'clock in the morning, you're reviewing the emails or the texts that might have come in from the day before after you've gone dark. And that you you consistently acknowledge that you got it and that you are working on it and you don't ignore them. Um, and it's it's not like a two to three day lag or or no, a God, unpredictable no. lag, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. It's very predictable. Right. Um, and again, that's where that's where high trust then gets established. Right. And it's the exact same thing that a manager and an agent will do, but an agent 
can do with a client, right? Right. Right. Or with another agent on the other side, just because it's, you know, a big issue for them does not mean that it, that it has, you know, legs and arms and breathing fire and that it's a huge issue for everyone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to bring it down a notch. So in our world, um, you know, with all these methods of communication that constantly gets challenged. So you got to stick by it. And it sounds like if you're honoring your boundaries and you're consistent with your response, that is every time you do that, you're putting coins in the trust bank and your clients trust that you're going to get to them. Your agents trust you're going to get to them. And this is what allows you to have the life that you do. Yeah. Partially. Yeah. It's also, it's also the same thing with my children. I would say though, is that they, cause I do show up at night with them. They realize mm -hmm. during the day I've got this, but then at night I've got them. So right. They they respect the fact that like I'm a working mom like they get that um, right. they're you know they're at my office they're in my car hearing me you know have sometimes when I'm dropping them off at school taking a call um, right. on the way to camp that you know uh, they're they've got agents coming over to my home office constantly or my staff so they are very interconnected in the world of Red Oak mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact I'll never forget one time they were all excited because I got we got two listings on their street from across from their school. And they were like, yeah, mom, you got listings in the neighborhood. I was like, look at those little realtor children. You know, they even know to call it a listing. And they were probably like six at the time. It was very cute. Right. I mean, right. they, they are paying attention. But they so, do realize that mom works. Right. And it's what, a, what an amazing example that you're working and you're consistently being present in their lives. And they get a sense that you can have both sides of life, right? And they aren't, they aren't responsible for your happiness. No, no. And frankly, I, you know, uh, one of the interesting things I remember realizing with um, uh, my son got into Taekwondo and the teacher once pulled me aside. He said, you know, you're not in enough of his trainings. This is when he was very young. Okay. He said, you're not in enough of his trainings. You should be here more often. And his grandmother was there a lot. And I said, you know what? I know this is going to sound terrible, but like, he's not taking Taekwondo for me. He's got to be doing this for him. And I'm going to support him and, and root him on. But... I don't need to be here every day pushing him. He needs to do this for himself. I have a very busy job during his trainings when he's doing them. I am working, so I'm not gonna be able to do that, but I will be here supporting him and encouraging from behind the scenes. And it's really interesting. He's been doing it now for six years and he has developed it and cared for it and done it because he wants to do it, not because it's always constantly mom there rooting him on, you know? So uh, I, I'm really big on having that same sort of methodology and how I run the company and, and how I run my household. Right. Um, yeah. How does that translate with your agents? I, I get it with, with the thing, but how does that translate in the way that you communicate and mentor your agents? Um, one thing I say is if you talk about values and standards as a company, Mm -hmm. um, and you hire to those values and standards, you don't usually have to remind your agents or um, bring them back to the source of why they need to do things a certain way right. because it was already important to them to do it that way. So right. we end up having a lot of people that we hire that it's more about working through maybe some external issues, but rarely mm -hmm. is it about learn working through the internal issues. Okay. So um, what I do is I hire really competent people and they occasionally need me to step in and, you know, support them or encourage them. But the majority of them are super competent people that are doing this for themselves. And so, so you're not trying to overmanage them, oh, right? Hell no. Yeah. No. <laughs> if you ask my people, they would be like, she does not overmanage. I, <laughs> I say, this is the way we work around here. And I want you right. guys to honor and respect that. And a lot of them do. And if they don't, you mm -hmm. fire them. You mm -hmm. get them out. And right. other people realize, like, they, they, you set a standard by who you keep. Okay. So, yeah. And who yeah. you hire. Yeah. A mentor actually said that to me once. You define your business by what you keep, not by what you let go. Mm hmm Right? Mm -hmm. And so, okay. Yeah. I definitely made that mistake early. And we all have. Any of my people are listening. I'm sorry. I overmanaged you. I got it. I'm, 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 I'm a recovering <laughs> overmanager. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right. Well, I wonder if most baby managers do that. Well, in any case, muzzling, muzzling to myself. What do you think your mission critical is as the broker, the CEO of Red Oak? I mean, I think honestly, it's probably again, it's evolved. I think what's most important for my agents and my staff to know is that I've got the strategy for the company and the vision for the company. And I've got to every day make sure that the people within it are upholding that vision. So whether it's community driven or sales driven or, um, 
in, you know, industry driven. There's those, there's certain things that are bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And I try to really, cause I could get into the details if I let myself, but I try to really just share the vision okay. and, um, and keep us on track and keep us in, in a, in a growth stage in the sense that we're constantly looking for new, better ways to do what we're already doing. Um, and so my job is to make sure that even when all the minutia, all the little details, one or two little escrows can take over the day, is that right. I don't get distracted by that. Because there's a way bigger thing that I've got to focus on. So what what is the vision? that you are trying to accomplish there? Well, you know, I think it's, 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 you know, we're, we're a transactional based company, right? Real estate in general is transaction to transaction to transaction. What I was just saying about like all these people are new, they come into your world and then they're out again. And I think that's where as an industry, we've really failed. Um, mm -hmm. We've never made it anything bigger than just a transaction, maybe a repeat transaction, but it's always just about this moment of time. And I think that real estate truly is about lifestyle and community. We are super engaged as a company in our community with with our um, with our foundation, uh, with what we do, just even in our movie nights in town, um, how we get involved in what's going on with politics or city council. So there's a we're deep rooted a group of 100 individuals that are really involved in that community that we live in. And, um, you know, Oakland and Berkeley are super dynamic communities as well. Right. Um, right. They're, they're not your average community. Um, but I think that the, the main goal then is to see, like, well, how can we as a company be more than just transaction after transaction. So the goal now is really to facilitate more ancillary um, services and resources available to our client base so that we're they're with us for their entire home ownership experience rather than just okay. when they buy okay. and when so, they sell. So you want, you want to be able to be involved in their lives throughout their home ownership. So right. ancillary services might be like, you know, vendors, contractors, design, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah going into that know. level more. Yeah, getting more into uh, the servicing of their homes um, mm -hmm. and being, you know, not just a referral source, but an actual company that they work for and hire. We are super connected as a company and we kind of need to take that into the business more. So that's what we're working on now. And that's been a big, um, Strategy that sounds like a, that sounds like a particular mentor of mine. I'm hearing echoes of somebody, but that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So that's a, that, that, you know that's one of the one of the visions of the company. But it's also bringing it, making sure that again we're not just you know pitching houses. Is right. that we care about the, the the community we're in. And I know that sounds a little cliche, but like I think if real estate and um, companies really did invest more in the community. Uh, it would be a more valued industry uh, right. as a whole. Right. So, so there's that. So um, you had said something in the prep call that just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was hoping you'd expand on it a little bit. You had oh, said yeah. that <laughs> you want to know. I don't, You're like, I don't know. I was just talking to you. <laughs> just two girlfriends just talking. talking. No, what you had said, we were talking about you're mission critical and we were talking about mom guilt actually that's the direction mm. we're in and i'd asked about how your kids felt about the business and and how did you fit time in for yourself and you had said that you had plenty of opportunities to expand your business but that you choose instead to expand your relationships and i've been sitting with that for three days going that is just fucking brilliant <laughs> oh, of course on this show Ah. I'm sorry. Well, well, yeah, well, I do. Well, I do. <laughs> like it. Like it. Yeah. Um, it. Yes, I do recall that. And yes. Uh, so, yes. Do, do you want so you were, you were talking about how instead of like adding an escrow company or buying another office that you choose to go on trips with your friends or spend more time with your kids or, you know, lean more into your relationship with your husband, who, by the way, is incredibly cute um <laughs> i said that brandon awesome. anyway oh, yeah. i watch the instant replay <laughs> and i just i it, rather than have a bigger business and i just what i wanted to know as a follow-up question is that just who you naturally are or was there some point in time where you said i choose i choose relationships rather than more business well I think it's a little bit of both, but it's probably more the choice. I think I am naturally not easily coerced into somebody else's idea of what I should do. 
Um, so I've always been like that, which has gotten me into plenty of trouble all through my school years, right? Because there was, I didn't believe that around studies or homework or tests, <laughs> but that's another show. Okay. Um, I think the key thing is, so it's not like I, I, I often don't struggle from the, the, the confidence game of I should be doing this. Everybody else is doing this. Like that's their lives. That's their decisions. So maybe it is what they should be doing, but that doesn't mean because other people are is that that's what I should be doing. So there's a little bit of just, that's always been how I've rolled. But mm -hmm. when it does come down to some really incredible opportunities that have shown up, that really, they, they were good opportunities. But I did know in doing this in the standard and the way that I would want to do it, I probably would have to give up something. And what would it be? Would it be those weekends with my friends? Would it be the dinners with my kids? Would it be the date night with my husband or that weekend away? Um, what would I be taking on? And when it, when you really just stick to your values, when you look at like what is most important to you and you know what is why are you here and who do you want to spend these days with? It's always been a really easy decision at this stage of my life with two young children that... Um, I would be out of alignment with what my values were in making those decisions to expand or double my agent count or add another office in another hot market um, or take on some other, you know, property management or something because it was a good opportunity. It was falling into my lap. I knew that something would have to go. And more than likely, it wasn't going to be it wasn't going to be the business. Right. I'd be taking on more business. It was going to be a family member or was it going to be a friendship. And um, so I've always been able to say, you know this is not the time. This is right. not the time. Maybe when the kids are older or something, but I choose to be a mother as well, not just a, a businesswoman. And, and that's probably maybe cost me money, but it's, uh, it's given me joy. Right. I mean, I think so many of us, myself included, get swept up in the shiny object, the business idea, the advice from stage. And I'm the person, the only reason that I'm not like under a table is that I'm able to try something out and then reject it really quick. Mm -hmm. But it sounds, it sounds to me like you have the, the compass to be able to reject it from the get go and decide what to do or not to do based yeah. on your life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a compliment when, when I think that's the other thing too, is you have to check like what's the ego and what's the heart, right? Like what's the, the, the what's your philosophical and, approach to this? Because that's, that's another tweetable right there. What was it ego or is it heart? Damn. Well, there's been a lot of times where I'm like, wow, my ego really loves this right now. They're saying like, you could do this and you could take this on and, and we want you. And I'm like, and that, and that does matter, but it doesn't matter more than those things that I, like these people that I committed to. And, and it's not just, my children, it's also my agents. Right. I committed to having this special resource and relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Adding on another 100 or 200 or 300 agents under my watch will diminish those relationships. Right. They will. There's right. no way that I could be all places at once. Right. So I look at it like, would you rather have a, a real high touch with fewer people or mm -hmm. a real little touch with a larger group of people? And for me, I, you know, I, I choose the first option. I, I rather have less people, but just really tight relationships. So. so let's talk about how you keep your, your eye on that ball. When things are overwhelming with a hundred agents, that's a lot of potential drama. <laughs> when you feel, and I don't, maybe you never do, but when you feel overwhelmed, there's just more incoming than any human should have to deal with. How do you get refocused? How do you get, or how do you keep center? What do you do? Uh, well, I, I, I have, I have three coaches. Uh, and this has been, I've let people have asked this. I've been on panels, something like three coaches, but they, I call them my sages. They're three women. They, they actually all serve a different domain. Okay, thinking of, about like, Hamlet, thinking about the what, but okay, never yeah, mind. Well, it's kind boil, of like, boil, like, boil in trouble. <laughs> there are these three, like they, they actually deal with the different like domains within me or like the pillars of which make me, me and, um, or make, you know, like of my own life. And, uh, I go to them for that balance when I'm feeling like I'm doing too much in one area versus another, or I'm compromised on my decision-making because of course we get overwhelmed or we make wrong decisions and then we don't know how to back out of them. Um, and I, I say that personally where you've, whether it's you made the wrong hire or you um, just did, just did the wrong move. It just didn't so work out. I didn't out. ask you this before, but three coaches, are they three different types of coaches totally. or just, yep. okay. So what, one, so one's a coach one, for what? Pure real estate. So okay. 
she is a coach. 40 years, Nancy Gardner, 40 years in the business. She's brilliant. She's tell it like it is. She's out of the DC area. She is actually Red Oak's coach and I inherited her. And mm. at first I was like, ah, oh, this is your coach. And we have been like, she's been amazing. And she's done a lot of work with me over the years. And she also works with my staff. She okay. meets with my managers. Um, so I have her and we just talk real estate industry related stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then I have one that's a, basically essentially a values coach. She works on keeping me and making sure that my vision in life, not mm -hmm. just in business, but in my marriage, in my home and what I want to accomplish is on track. And then I'm in alignment. And when I get out of alignment, you know, she does like a tweak. She's almost like a chiropractor. Um, and then, and so she is not in that. She's actually a licensed their therapist and she is actually a um she runs these music groups she's a celloist but she is also a business coach and she works now with my organization but i've worked with her probably for five years uh, with really deep deep coaching and then um my third one is part of my ceo group so i have and i do i would say to anyone that is an owner and a ceo of of a business um and is looking for you know you know they, they want to scale the business up or whatever it is of just making that investment. It's a group of different CEOs that come together. We meet for about six hours, uh, one day a month as a group. And then uh, we, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with the person that runs that group. And she is this real is, estate related or just no, CEOs? No, not, yeah. I'm the only real estate in there. They're all CEOs. One right. is in, you know, finance. We have a community uh, person. There's an attorney that's running right. a big firm. And then I do, and she's a Deloitte, uh, former Deloitte partner. So she has that um, really very high level, like the stuff I hate doing, like the business planning and the, and the chart making. And But she's really good at like getting all these thoughts in my head out onto paper with strategic plans. Um, okay. So they all kind of think a different thing. But that's when I get overwhelmed. Right. Or like when I'm feeling, you know, they're just the, the, <clears throat> the things are not jiving as much, or maybe it's I'm hiring people or how they fit in the organization. Um, I go to that group because I can, I can, I, leaders, leaders, right? And people that are in charge, they also need to check in, right? Nice and to hear can, that it's right? not, it's, it's just not all Vanessa no. fabulousness. <laughs> oh, no, God, no, not at all. I mean, there are times when I'm like, well, to put my head in my hands and just downright cry. <laughs> but I have these people that I really trust right. that are there supporting me. So right. um, at a really high level. Right, right, so right. You need right. that. You can't because you can't, no offense, but you can't really go to the people that you've hired and be right. like, wah, wah, right? I think we all know, I think we all kind of know that that we need to be outside of that because you gotta have different hats. In different relationships yeah. and if you screw up the hats you screw up the relationship right i mean <laughs> that's <it's tweetable. laughs> yes it's true and so. it, it, is, it is crazy okay so some kind of rapid fire ish questions what what less than a hundred dollar tool gadget book you know whatever has really made an improvement or an impact in your life or your business um so there's a few of them. And I, uh, one is my Kindle. Um, I'm a massive, massive, massive reader. I love and that they called it a Kindle because every time somebody says that, I think they're talking about me. <laughs> Kindle. No, it does sound like that. I mean, it does. Probably the way I think it is. That was really you know, so my Kindle. Me, yeah, your Kindle. Got Not it. Not confused with my Kindle. No. Kindle, um, who's also pretty great. I like um, that. I think you're probably more than 100 bucks. Is <laughs> that um, you could just doubt, like, any time you want to go deep into something, you could just, like, instantly buy it and it's there and then you could take like 20 different 100 different books with you when you travel because i read really fast so like if i had to carry all them like i'd just be like i don't leaving them everywhere or or having to buy them and so i just feel like that way i take it with me everywhere it's always in my purse so if like i have to get the car wash or whatever i could read but it's just there so i think it's right. just one of those things now granted it costs more than 100 once you get it all full loaded but well, yeah um, yeah it's a cheap little device that's just changed my world Okay. And I think maybe go kind of deeper. Um, two other big ones. I use this thing called Sun Basket. Um, okay. There are many of them out there, but Sun Basket is a little place where you can order all of your um, meals for the week. And they're not, they don't come pre made. And I know this is ridiculous because we're talking real estate, but like if you want to eat healthy and you still actually want that, the joy of cooking, like I like to have a glass of wine, turn my music on, and cook. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want it showing up done. It just doesn't feel as authentic. Right. So you pick them, they come in all the right you know, amounts, and then you just mm -hmm. cut them and, and, and cook a nice dinner and you can pick weeks in advance. You don't have to go food shopping. It shows up at your door. 
you know, throw stuff away. It just, it hits all my high values. I've been um, fixing on trying one of those and I haven't done it to. yet. I'll send you, you get a, like a coupon. I'll send it to you. Oh, I'll get like $30 nice. off my next meal. Um, <laughs> but I've been doing it for, I'm going on two and a half, almost three years of using this wow. service. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, then the, I could say, I'd say the third thing, which is huge for any of you business owners is, is bill.com. I was checking um, into that. Yeah. It, it looks pretty sweet. It's a game changer because that is where I have all of my commissions processed through that and I can literally just download it on the app on my phone. Oh, I was going to say it's here right now, but it's not. Um, <laughs> and you can just sign checks and automatically mm -hmm. deposit into your agent's accounts. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's other apps like this, but this one's super easy to use. Mm -hmm. The key thing as to why I like it is two reasons. One, it's good business practice because you're not um, signing blank checks. Mm -hmm. If you're the only check signer, you're not signing blank checks. If you're going to be out of town or you're going to be in meetings and mm -hmm. leaving them out there, that's a dangerous business move. Mm -hmm. Um, and something will go wrong at some point. So not a good idea. Um, and secondly, I can go on vacation and I can still get my agents paid from wherever I am. I just have to process that before the end of the day. And I can, it makes me scan over and, you know, check my business and check what's going on, check who did had a great sale, uh, but it gets deposited right into their account. And it doesn't, so it does not make me have to stay in town right. or, you know, stay at the office later because the checks weren't in, all the commissions weren't there. No matter where I am, I can do it. So I, I am travel. so listening to you and thinking, someday I'm going to have so many checks to write that this is going to be a game changer. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah, you will. And even if it's one or two. But the truth is, for these companies that are doing, I mean, I, we, we sometimes process 30 transactions in a day. You can't, you got to you gotta be able to sign it. Um, and if it's a big, 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 big company, it's just a great way to right. do it in a really, you know, but, but I've done it like on a boat in Mexico, right? I've right. done it where... It's, it's, it's still giving me control over that aspect of the business, but I'm not sitting behind a desk in the traditional way. So that's one of those tech platforms that's just been incredible. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to dive into Vanessa, the kick-ass broker owner who has grown this, this business so high. What advice do you give to smart, driven new agents or agents who just want to kickstart, kick their business into another notch? What advice? Uh, I think that's the one where I would say you got to get a Kindle, you got to read, you got to read and you got to expose yourself to the industry, right? Um, the right. more it's sometimes really hard to get um, a client to trust mm -hmm. in you if you've had no prior production, right? Okay. But there is a wealth of industry sources. I mean, I remember w when I got into this business, I was told to sign up for several publications, most of which are gone, but like, you know, the risk media the car magazines mm -hmm. in the news. Mm -hmm. it, these are mm -hmm. simple accounts and subscription fees where you can sign up and get all that information of how top people are doing this. Um, right. The local, just the local business times, but mm -hmm. just learn this business because there's obviously the art of the deal, like the art of the transaction when you're in there doing the sale, but there's sometimes mm -hmm. a long time before that comes. Go to the conferences, go surround yourself with really smart people, sit around those top producers. And in my office, we have a very collaborative setting. So everyone kind of talks and airs stuff out together. Don't be ashamed of what you don't know. Like, okay, so get up. I'm going to ask you two super practical questions around this. What is a really good book recommendation and what is your top conference recommendation for new agent? Um, ooh, okay. So I, 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 I still think I'm in conferences are going to be the best you can spend. Yeah. In um, yeah, yeah, I do. And by I the way, CSF I, and I, and uh, you yeah, know, yeah. New York, and, or, and Inman is coming up. I, I think there's still tickets available, but you could even go if you're in the Bay Area where Vanessa is. You could even go to the Bar Camp. I think that they're having yeah. on Monday, right? So that's uh, in two weeks, July seventeenth is I think when it starts. Is what it starts, yeah. So that because so. that, that gives you yeah. a huge, like, really big view of what's going mm -hmm. on in the industry, and then you could kind of like it's like a buffet. You can go to the marketing stuff. You can go to the transaction stuff. You, right. There's so much to do there and it's a big full week of it. And then right. the relationships, right? I mean, that's where I met you. That's right. it's, you. it's who you meet there too. Technically, um, I met you at CAR where I said on Mike that I have a big crush on you, but that's okay. We're, no, it was we're, NAR. Yeah. Oh, was it NAR? Yeah, it was NAR. Um, yeah. So, the, I, I, you know, 
I think those, I think Edmund's great for that. Um, and I also think it's a great news publication. I just right. do. I think it's, we it's do something. Too. Yeah. It's just right. read it. it every right. day there's 20 articles. If you're right. not out selling a house, start your morning with the 20 articles. So um, it sounds like, you know, go to the conference, the Inman conference, and it sounds like sign up for an Inman select subscription. Oh, it's dead yeah. cheap. It's like 149 bucks or something it's like that. It's a write off. Right. And the, yeah. st and the stuff you learn, because when you're holding a Sunday open house or someone's coming in through from a Zillow lead, if you can't mm -hmm. talk like you know the industry as a brand new agent, right? Um, you're not going to get any client to work with you. And right. so you, that's the thing is just learn about what happens in the transaction. Uh, great books. I think um, I love uh, Katie Lance's that her social uh, media. Oh, one. yes. That's it's a, a good one. It's a great uh, book for just how to get your feet wet in the industry and, and using social media for that. She mm -hmm. makes it so easy. I'm a huge fan. I got every one of my company one of those books. Right. Um, Joe Rand's new book. Oh, Joe Rand. Yeah, uh, Agents and Disruptors. This one, it's in my yes. oh, I love it. I just love Joe. Get what he, and, and it's, I mean, even though he's a lawyer. Discounters yeah, and know, Even though he's got a lawyer's background, he writes so that even I can understand what he's talking about. I think yes. it's a great book. Um, I could go on and on. There's so many. I love anything by Brene Brown. You know? Yes, Brene yes. Brown. I'll get. I'll throw in two of my own. I think that Larry Kendall's book, uh, Ninja Selling, is an awesome book for just teaching you. Oh, it's so that. good. Okay. Oh, dude, we'll have to talk about that. Uh, it is it's so incredibly good for breaking down the process of maintaining your relationships and becoming the realtor of choice for the people that already know, like, and trust you. It's mm. just, mm -hmm. it's 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 a super fine book. Um, and I'm a, I'm a little bit obsessed right now with Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. Mm -hmm. um, that I is, like that. I've been taking negotiation classes uh, with him, real estate related, and it's just... It has turned some of my ideas 180 degrees in how to negotiate with incredible respect for the person you're negotiating with and um, no sales bullshit manipulation. Yeah, oh, I'm going to like that one too. I'll have to yeah, yeah, well, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're super, they're super fine. Um, okay, and one last thing, what are the worst recommendations you hear out there for agents? Oh, God, well, I think I think the leads thing is a tough one. I, I agree that you need to work your business and hire and and and, and get transactions, which require individuals, right? right? I hate that they are called a lead. Yeah. And I hate when transactions are called deals. Yeah. So that vernacular has to change. I that, that's a, some of the stuff I loved in um, Joe's book when he references salespeople that we call ourselves salespeople because it's so much bigger than that. But when we <laughs> when we refer to somebody buying a home in a community as a lead, and I know that that's a sales term out there, I just think it's really a that once you, if you are brand new and you are starting to think leads, 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 rather than what creates a real good business is looking at them as humans and your clients who you will help get a house in a certain community to live their life, it is much bigger than a lead and should never even from the infancy of when that person comes into your life ever be thought of as a lead. It just sounds yes. trashy. Um, it just <laughs> It's like the beginning of a relationship that's supposed to go somewhere and grow your business and your sphere of influence and referrals and it starts here. I hate when it's used um, and I cringe at it and I so that's one of them. And I think also just, you know, this whole thing of like deals, deals, how many deals, deals, like when it's so about volume, um, it's, I, you can't get to that much volume and really give service. And I think that there is an oxymoron with volume and service. They start to get really, um, like if one goes up, one goes down. So you've got to really look at how are you servicing the clientele in a long term you know, game here, like a long, like chess. This is not just about one, two, three deals. And I see the ones that do that in the business. Um, they're not here in 10 years, right? So it sounds like, you know, with a, with an emphasis on relationships and with a relationship on humanness, <clears throat> it almost sounds like you're not real big on mass quantities of internet leads. 
No, you know, we, we do, we track uh, where our business comes from. We have a form called the PEI. It's the preliminary escrow instructions. And we always track where did this client come from? Uh, we track the, the age group and, you know, how you knew them. So we can kind of get an idea of where we're putting our marketing budget as a company. Right. And then just to see where the health of our agents businesses are. And it's over 90%. I think I, I want to say it's closer to like 96% of our transactions are done through sphere of influence. So yeah. very, very minimal. Um, online advertising budget uh, for leads, right? We advertise online, we have a digital presence, a big one, but it is not just to generate leads. Uh, a matter of fact, as we were building out our site recently, it was not, we like we were not sitting out with this idea of, oh, make it a lead site and make it super sticky for leads. Like, no, we wanna make it a content, a place to go about content with the community in which you wanna live. And well, to be fair, the Red Oak site has been that way since I've known you. It isn't oh, just the new site. Yeah. It has always been about, about being the ambassador of the Oakland, Berkeley area. It has always been about that. And I it's love evolving the storytelling. Yeah. Even as the thing, even as the industry standards become more and more leads and more, mm -hmm. we didn't, we're like, fine, that's great. We are not building a site that way. So, right. um, so yeah, I think that's, I mean, it's not a, a diss on leads. Like it's just not my value. Like it's not, I, I don't, I don't, I find that when we generate clientele purely through those digital platforms, um, it's probably been the hardest transactions on a whole. Those are really where we will have a more difficult transaction because there is not a lot of trust um, and relationships and prior relationships built with these people. So it, it's tougher. So it sounds like when we when we when we bring it back to the original part of the question, you know, the bad advice that you hear from agents, it almost sounds like what you're saying is don't invest all of your basket and your money in these, you know, mass quantities of internet leads. Um, I like to call it on the on the on the cotton candy wishes of internet leads. Um, you know, those empty calories. Your your value. Your your feeling that they should really invest in leaning into the relationships of people they already know. Leaning into the relationships, so the <clears throat> relationship part, and then leaning into the knowledge of what it takes to be a good agent, right? Know your community, know your schools, know right. how to, do, know your contracts. Be somebody that someone trusts because they're highly competent. And that's where like my Kindle is my best friend because that, there's so much information in there. You know, don't spend your time paying an online lead generation. Right. Um, to, to funnel all these leads and you cannot, they come in droves. There's barely any air or oxygen behind them. And then you have no, you have nothing to give them once they arrive. If you spend your time not wasting your money here and educating yourself and becoming a really, really good advocate and, and resource to a client, when that one comes, take care of them, they will send another and they will send another. And that's, that's the, the philosophy I would say, I think is, again, not everyone's philosophy, but that is definitely mine and the company. My my girl crush on you continues, Vanessa. <laughs> well, I think we're we're really out of time. Um, I am so grateful that you you took an hour out of your incredibly busy day, and I know that you know everything is crashing and burning all around you in Oakland. But you are a calm oasis, and you spent it with us. Thank I'm not you. known for being calm, but uh, okay, all right, yeah, that was a misnomer. <laughs> uh, but you spent the time with us. Yeah. It was a lovely hour. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, go forth and be awesome. Okay? Love All right. you. See you soon. Thank you, everybody, for coming and staying tuned. Again, if you saw it on the recording, you can still put questions down below. We'll get them to Vanessa. I'll get you the answers. Okay? Thanks, Bye, guys. guys. Thank Bye. You.